to another episode of Gore War. This time on the show, grab your sister, because we're going to be comparing two inbred hillbilly horror films to see which one is the scariest. This is Wrong Turn versus Hatchet. Yeah! <laughs> Wrong Turn stars Dexter star Desmond Harrington as a businessman named Chris, uh, coasting through West Virginia on his way to an unspecified business meeting. Uh, on the way, he runs into a bit of a traffic jam as far as the main highway goes, so he has to take the, uh, the obvious off-road uh, course, which leads him into the sticks and plowing headfirst into a car occupied by Eliza Dushku. So, points there. After which they uh, venture off into the woods to try and find help, only to find a cabin belonging to the Mountain Men, which are a trio of inbred hicks. And basically the movie is a game of cat and mouse to see if uh, the group can uh, survive and uh, get to safety. Mm -hmm. So Hatchet's about this guy called Ben, or I'll call him token nerdy can't talk to a woman guy who wants to go off and do something else rather than be around uh, uh, a festival uh, seeing tits and getting drunk he'd rather take a uh, token black guy with him on a uh, swamp filled adventure with a bunch of token people such as token fat guy uh, token Asian guy token con guy token blonde guy uh, <laughs> to the ditzy girl yeah, the ditzy girl and the, snobby, uh, and the snobby girl. And the snobby girl. Mm -hmm. They go on this uh, haunted boat cruise, and the main guy who's leading the tour actually has no idea what he's doing, and they crash the boat in the swamp. And earlier on, they mention the uh, the mythos of, or the myth of Victor Crowley and the story. Victor Crowley was a uh, deformed child uh, at birth, and died in a house fire due to some bullies throwing some fireworks at the house and his dad who tried to save him killed him uh, trying to chop down the door and accidentally hit him in the head with a hatchet uh, which brings us to the uh, plot of the movie where Victor Crowley runs around chasing everybody and hacking them up with a hatchet sometimes corkscrewing their head off whichever way it's all equally as entertaining when Wrong Term was initially released, it was the first uh, gore film to be released in cinemas for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people fell in love with it. And I can understand that because, true, it does have a lot of elements in it that are throwback to the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. Like The Hills Have Eyes and things like yeah. that. And you said you saw a lot of similarities with Deliverance as well. Yeah, which they said also on, the, on, on, on many reviews they said. Yeah, yeah. exactly. When Hatchet was initially released, there was a lot of build-up prior to its release, as opposed to Wrong Term, which got its hype afterwards. I mean, it had all these great cameos from classic icons of horror. I mean, it was, had all this build-up about it, it was going to be like the next big thing. And when it came out, a lot of people were kind of disappointed that it didn't quite live up to its hype. But I found it just so much more entertaining, because it... Hatchet is just so much more light-hearted, it understands the tropes, it exploits the tropes, it glorifies the tropes. Wrong Turn, and a lot of the reviews we read, stated how they didn't feel like the story dragged on a bit, but I felt that's all it did. The cameos, like you said, actually didn't really need to happen in Hatchet, honestly. Yeah. I still think Hatchet would have been great even if the cameos weren't in there. Yeah, but the thing is, they're just fun, and that's really what Hatchet's yeah. going for. It's just trying to be a, a good time. Fun movie. And it really was. I mean, yeah. for entertainment purposes, Hatchet definitely has it in the back. Uh, Hatchet has definitely got it in terms of the story. Definitely. Right. And let's not be honest, it actually had a story as well. Yeah, whereas Wrong Turn kind of started to write something and then just sort of turned into a situation. Yeah, yeah. so Hatchet, has got off a story. Characters in Wrong Turn, particularly the very, one character... Very loose use of the word. Yeah. <laughs> the main character is like a piece of wood. I've never... He was in Dexter, for God's sake, and yet he had no emotion, particularly in a scene where they were in the house initially, 
and he looked in the fridge and there was like disembodied hands and he had Nothing. no reaction Nothing. until he opened a lunchbox and I was like I would have freaked out when I saw all the other shit and it wasn't until like the lady saw like like a foot or something or whatever it was and it was like he still can't seem to like his face kind of tries to do something and then just doesn't and, and it doesn't stop there even when he gets shot even when he gets he shot should, it's like oh. I have to say even the rednecks act better and they had faces that were like plastic and no dialogue no dialogue they grunted which also they didn't really need to we discussed that yeah they didn't really need to grunt i mean they weren't monsters they were just like really like inbred buckets. they were almost acting like they were like cavemen like uh, uh, uh. whereas they they don't need to do that. I mean, when you kind of like the guy at the beginning was very redneck, oh, like, yeah. over the top redneck, and then it's like tone it back, and then we're like, it's you've gone too far back. It's go forward again. But what about Eliza Dushku? I mean, she. I mean, she takes up the whole face of all of the front cover of the DVD. She. I think at this point she's still riding on the Buffy fame. So yeah. she plays her character from Buffy quite heavily in this movie. She does. Well. She plays it well. Hatchet. Oh dear. The characters. Uh, we'll start with Ben as well. He played the, I know, the uh, the American Pie dorky, like you said, can't talk to a girl sort of guy. Mm. He rambled on about his bad relationship in the past. Which is well. kind of weird because normally the main character would be a very sort of strong character. He's a very yeah. sort of weak, yeah. nerdy, tall, lanky character. Yeah. And we had, like you said, a cliche black guy who took, who ticked all the boxes. Yeah. He used all the slang. He, there were the cliche tourists played by that guy who's in everything, but you never recognise him. I'll bring up his picture now. Yeah. You know who I'm talking about. That guy there. They were the cliche American tourists. They were the, oh, let me put some sunscreen yeah. on your face, D. You want to get burnt? Or yeah. Yeah. Those kind of people. Then we have the porn star girls. Now we have blonde girl who is a complete. Complete dits. Yeah. And uh, almost, yeah, well, actually, I'm going to say almost to obscene levels, but everyone is at obscene levels in this movie. And when, and even Victor Crowley himself, I mean, we were talking before about the hype. I mean, one of the biggest hypes of the movie was this was going to be the next, like, Jason Voorhees, ironically played by Kane Hodder, who played Jason in parts 7 through 10. And let's get to the cameo characters as well. I mean, even though you said they didn't need to be there, which is true, yeah. but the fact that they were there just added to the fun. We have Robert Englund at the beginning. We have Tony Todd, who had an even less significant role. Yes. Yeah. Of just being a, a rival haunted, like, tour guide. So the shows up and coughs and then leaves. Yeah, exactly. He, he, his role had no significance to the None movie, but certain. because it was there, Fans like myself can just go, it's Candyman! It's kind of your fanboy moment. Where yeah. You're just kind of like, this is why I love horror, because those little things, they nod to they nod to you occasionally. Yeah. You know? I think uh, in terms of characters, definitely, um, I would say that Hatchet would have to take it purely, and this is what I was saying before, I completely forgot about all the names of the characters in Hatchet, but you know what? It's because they're trophy, and I didn't care what their names were yeah. because I was too invested in having fun with the movie that I'm just like, I know he's gonna die, I know he's gonna die. I'm waiting for like, how are they gonna do this? Like, screw the guy's head off and then chop this other guy up. Whereas with Wrong Turn, I'm trying really hard to invest myself in characters that are just so boring. So, Hatchet's gonna have to take it again for characters. The setting and the visual effects for Hatchet um, are all practical effects, and I think that is a good nod mm -hmm. for a horror genre in general. Yeah, which is the main thing that actually both these movies advertise that fashion. They're both yeah. strong throwbacks to like the 70s and 80s. Definitely. Um, in terms of the the deaths in Hatchet and stuff like that. And, and the, the sheer violence and the, the gore. Mm. Apart from the very scene, the scene at the beginning where I didn't understand why the guts weren't wet, I think everything in terms of like, like the facial makeup um, on Victor to all the deaths were great. The sets, on the other hand, 
uh, it we from, literally from day dot. Apart from the uh, the street scenes, which I'm pretty sure were shot on two different streets, and to make the festival look bigger. Now that I think about it, it was really smaller than it actually was. That's true. Uh, the swamp set was clearly on a night set because the way the lighting was shining on some stuff that you could just clearly tell that that wasn't the moon and just, you know, you can rearrange shrubs and make stuff look completely different if you want to, yeah. but it didn't sell me on the set yeah. because they I couldn't see the death. Swim. You feel more like you're on a sitcom set than you are yeah. a, a horror movie set. Yeah. Wrong Turn uh, is got some chance to score some points in the back now because this had a great location and it utilised it to its full potential in a, in a great many scenes. Mm. I mean, first we had the dense forest, which you definitely felt like these people could easily get lost in. Yeah. Wrong Turn did use practical effects as well, but uh, they did use a lot of CG at the same time. But it wasn't the silly looking kind that you see in films like uh, Blood the Last Vampire, which I reviewed on Other Horror. This, it did look very authentic, and a lot of uh, effort and money was put into making these look good. In particular, um, if you remember the scene where uh, the girl gets the axe to the mouth and her body drops down as well. Yeah. That looked good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But as you were saying, if you want to, uh, you were saying that yeah. just a little while ago. But, um, I just know, like, thinking about it now, uh, the deaths in Hatchet, they really want you to know that somebody's dying and being mutilated. Like, like someone's getting hacked. Like, it's still you going are fucking on. fucking dead. The gruesome and kind of sort of crouch back in your seat kind of moments are um, more so when they're still being alive and you know the black guy's getting picked up and he's getting shit ripped back it's scary and it's yeah. continuously being scary when somebody's head is clean cut off straight away it's kind of taken the quick buzz out of that the effects are still good in that regard but I feel that Hatchet has a way of making those last so much longer. Yeah. For what it has, Wrong Turn is a brilliant shot movie. I mean, the location is vast and frightening in, in its scale. The mountain men look great for what you do see of them, and what for what you don't, the unknowingness, like, like the mystery of it, is still very frightening. Mm. And the death scenes are all brilliantly shot. But Hatchet's gore is its selling point, and it delivers with a vengeance. And these yeah. are all really well done practical effects that had a lot of, like, real effort put into them. It's tough because that's it's going to be the continued argument that the set itself in Hatchet is not as good as Wrong Turn, but when you come down to it, the actual death and gore itself is what is, you see these movies for. Is what you see them for the horror. Yeah, the film and uh, yeah. So we might. I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna catch a lot of flack for this, but Hatchet, Hatchet again. Again gets the point. <laughs> we saw these movies. I probably think at the wrong time, in the wrong order. Hatchet received a lot of praise before its release, and some people felt it didn't live up to it. We saw Wrong Turn on the coattails of all the praise it's received since its release. And we felt maybe it didn't live up to all the praise it was getting, so maybe it, we, it, let, it was let down a little bit for us. While it's still a fantastic film, and I think, yeah, it definitely des I mean, deserved a lot of the praise it got, but maybe not all of it. And maybe that ruined it a little bit. Everybody has their own opinion about a film, and we kind of maybe put it up a little bit too high when we watched Wrong Turn. And then when we watched Hatchet, I'd already put myself at the low point and enjoyed it more and it kind of swapped around a bit. Yeah. And, and what you were saying and what we came to the conclusion was Hatchet doesn't take itself seriously and it's a fun story about just horror, gruesome fun. I mean, Wrong Turn has made it. I mean, there's five of these things out now with a six on its way. Mm. So I suppose it doesn't really matter what we say as no. far as that goes. And it, is, and it is a good film, but for just sheer enjoyment, we got far more of that out of Hatchet. Loved Hatchet so much. <laughs> and that's it for this episode of Gore World. So I'll get my straw stick back, and I'll put that in there. And I'll just say, see you next time. Goodbye.